डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड माय टीचर फ्रेंड्स नमस्कार आई वेलकम यू टू द प्रेजेंटेशन लेक्चर ऑन हिस्टोलॉजी ऑफ द लीवर पार्ट टू नाउ एज यू कैन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन आई एम शोइंग यू वन पेज इन फैक्ट आई एम शोइंग यू टू पेजेस इन द बिगिनिंग and this information is the additional information that you need to go through after this presentation lecture this is the first page then you need to go through this figure then this is this information then this page that you need to read <clears throat> now we are starting this presentation lecture this is the first point now first of all what this lecture is all about see in our previous lecture on the histology of liver we had discussed the components of the liver that the liver is made up of 80% cells are there and this cells are hepatocyte then the bile duct system now we have idea about the bile duct system that it is made up of canaliculi bile ductule and the bile ductule finally they are opening into the bile duct so that is the entire bile duct system we have studied and what is the hepatic sinusoid so the space between the hepatocyte that receiving the blood that uh, are known as the hepatic sinusoid so now we are having the idea about the hepatocyte bile duct system and hepatic sinusoid now what is there in this lecture we are going to discuss so all this structure hepatocyte bile duct system and hepatic sinusoid how they are organized how they are arranged how they are present in the entire liver so this lecture is all about that the arrangement of the hepatocyte bile duct system and the hepatic hepatic sinusoids in the liver moving on the second point of our discussion now in this second point we are discussing about hepatic lobule now before that i am showing you <coughs> this one is the hepatic lobule so we are going to discuss about this you read the names okay now for years years <coughs> anatomist described the hepatic lobule as the functional unit of the liver so the figure that i had shown you was of the hepatic lobule and hepatic lobules are the functional unit of the liver and according to this model hepatic lobule model the shape of the hepatic lobule is the hexagonal shape that means it is having six side for example one hepatic lobule is shown over here and as you can see this one is the one side this one is the second this one is the third side this one is the fourth side this one is the fifth side and this one is the sixth side so in a hepatic lobule there are six side so hepatic lobule is a six sided structure and it is hexagonal one in the center central vein is present in the center central vein is present and radiating out from it 
are rows of hepatocyte and the hepatic sinusoid. So here this one is the central vein and radiating so in all the radiuses in all direction that you can see the rows of the hepatocyte are present and now we know these rows are the lamina they are the hepatic lamina and in between these lamina the hepatic sinusoids are present then located at three corners of the hexagon is the portal triad so hepatic lobule is hexagonal structure and on three corner <coughs> the portal triad is present for example here this one is the portal triad this one also the portal triad this one is the portal triad so we now know what the hepatic portal triad is made up of which are the components so portal vein hepatic artery and the bile duct together these three are known as the portal triad so on the corner of hepatic lobule this portal triad are present now this type of arrangement or this type of lobules the hepatic lobules they are present or they are described very clearly in the liver of adult pig so this hepatic lobules are clearly seen in the liver of the adult pigs now in human liver this hepatic lobule it is very difficult to find such type of hepatic lobule in the human liver so in human liver in our liver this hepatic lobules are not well defined and in the pig liver these hepatic lobules are clearly they are present and they are well defined and these hepatic lobules they are surrounded by a thick layer of connective tissue so this was the first model and this first model the name of this model is the hepatic lobule now we are moving on the second model now before that see here first model first model is known as classic hepatocyte model so in this figure this is hepatic lobule this one is hepatic lobule this one is hepatic lobule this one all these hexagonal structures are hepatic lobule and they are the classic hepatic lobule and what they are showing that on the corners of this hexagon the portal triads are present so these are all <coughs> portal triad and in the portal triad there is hepatic artery or the arterial bile duct and portal vein together these three are known as the portal triad and in the center of the hexagon central vein or the venule is present so this is the central vein they are showing and what this arrows why this arrows they are showing why this arrow they are showing what is the reason see so hepatic lobule drains blood from the portal vein and the hepatic artery to the hepatic or the central vein 
सो नाउ वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट फर्गेट अबाउट दिस बाइल्ड एंड फोकस ऑन द पोर्टल वेन एंड ये पेडिक आर्टेरियल आई एम कैंसलिंग दिस बाइल्ड and we are focusing on portal hepatic portal vein and hepatic arteriole and in the center this is the central vein so now here we need to understand here the hepatocytes are arranged the laminas are arranged so these are the laminas that i am showing now the branch of this hepatic artery so i am showing you the branch then the branch of hepatic vein the branch means the arteriole the capillaries okay and from this arteriole or the capillaries what will happen let's say from the artery it is having the oxygenated blood so the oxygen will pass into the hepatocyte and then from the branch of this hepatic portal vein so nutrients will pass into hepatocyte and then the capillaries will join together and they will be forming the venule and this venule will open into the central vein so with this they are showing the direction of the blood flow so in the first classical model of hepatic lobule what is happening the blood is flowing from the portal triad to the central vein and in between this blood is supplying oxygen to hepatocyte and also it is supplying nutrients from the branches or the capillaries of the portal vein to the hepatocyte so that is the meaning of this first model now we are discussing the second model now the second model second model is the portal lobule now what this model is all about so this model emphasizes this model explain this model focuses on the exocrine function of the liver and what is the exocrine function of the liver that is the secretion of bile hepatocyte cell they secrete bile and in which direction this bile is flowing so that thing we are discussing in this second model now the bile duct of a portal triad in this model is taken as the center of the portal lobule and the portal lobule is the triangular in shape so in this figure this one this hexagon structure hepatic classic hepatic lobule this one is the lobule hepatic lobule this one this one this one this one this all are hepatic lobule and in the center this is the triangle okay in between this hexagonal classic lobules this hepatic lobule the triangular structure is present and this triangular structure is known as the portal lobule so this one this triangle is the portal lobule and in the center of this portal lobule this duct is present so this duct is the bile duct okay so in the triangle in the center this is this three this three is the uh, portal triad and one of them is the bile duct so here the portal lobule is in shape and is defined by three imaginary 
imaging we are imaging it is not present we are imaging imaginary straight lines and this Im <coughs> imaginary straight line they are connecting with three central vein that are close to the portal triad so according to this model this this is imaginary line this one is imaginary line and this one is imaginary line and as you can see this imaginary lines where they are opening so they are opening into the central vein and now what this model is explaining see portal lobule drains bile from hepatocyte to the bile duct so now we need to understand this model see uh, what happens here here lamina is present here lamina is present here lamina is present lamina 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 okay and in the previous lecture we have learned that lamina lamina means it is the row of hepatocyte and this hepatocyte they are secreting bile this bile where it is entering so it is entering into the canaliculi canaliculi are opening into the ductule ductules are opening into the bile duct so from all these places ductules are opening into the bile duct and they are pouring they are pouring bile into the into this bile duct so with this green arrow the direction of the bile is shown for example this arrow that means bile is entering into this bile duct and from all this hepatocyte the bile will enter into the this bile duct so that is the meaning of this second model that is portal lobule model so now we are moving forward so with this we have completed the second model that is the portal module and this second model has not gained widespread acceptance so anatomist they are not accepting this model so which one is the correct model so in the recent years the more preferred model or the most favor or very popular model is the third model that is the hepatic acinus model and according to this third model hepatic acinus is the structural and functional unit of the liver and what 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 this hepatic acinus is so hepatic acinus is an approximately oval mass and this mass oval mass includes portion of two neighboring hepatic lobule so with the figure i am showing you for example uh, this this was let's say this is the first model okay hepatic lobule hexagon classical hepatic lobule hexagon in shape six side and on three corner 1 2 3 portal triad is present and in the center central vein is present this is the first model hepatic mode lobule okay according to second model three imaginary line 1 2 3 and this three imaginary line they are connecting the central vein so this triangle is formed this triangle is known as the portal lobule 
in the center portal triad is present and in the portal triad there is a bile duct so from all the places from canaliculi and ductules the bile is poured into the center bile duct this is the second model portal lobule model now the third third model okay third model hepatic acinus model so this is hepatic lobule this is hepatic lobule so these two are neighboring hepatic lobules and in between these hepatic lobules the oval mass is present this one is the oval mass okay so the oval mass i am darkening right now with the blue color so this is the oval mass and this oval mass is known as the hepatic acinus okay now this hepatic acinus hepatic acinus is shown over here so you first you go through this figure <coughs> i am explaining this one hepatic acinus so with this we have completed the fourth point now we are moving on the fifth point of our discussion so this is the fifth point so here where is the hepatic acinus so in this figure again i am drawing you Up again i am drawing the oval mass this is the oval mass and this oval mass is hepatic acinus then what is this this one this one is hepatic lobule this one is hepatic lobule so these two are neighboring hepatic lobule and in between this two neighboring hepatic lobule the oval mass is present and this oval mass is known as the hepatic acinus okay so the short axis of hepatic acinus is defined by branches of what is short axis what is short axis branches of the portal triad we know portal triad portal triad is made up of hepatic artery portal vein and the bile duct so the branches branches of the hepatic artery vein and bile duct and these branches where they are running the, that the branches are running along the border of the hepatic lobule so let's say uh over here this is the hepatic axis uh, uh, this is the short axis they are showing and with the arrow this part this part is shown as short axis but here you don't misunderstand that this line this double arrow line is short axis it is not like that see this one this one is the portal triad this one is the portal triad and here in portal triad there are three component and in this portal triad also there are three component that is the artery vein and the bile duct and their branches branch branch of the artery branch of the vein and branches of the bile duct they are running all the places so this branches of the portal triad is known as short axis that is the meaning of this point short axis so in fifth point we have discussed about the short axis so here also here also this is the short axis 
now once again we are going back to this figure so here so here you see clearly the portal triad is shown and red color is used for the artery and blue color is used for the hypoportal vein and here these are the branches so all these branches together they are forming the short axis okay and the area around this short axis this oval shape area okay this 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 one this one and this one so the ultimate shape is the oval mass shape so this oval mass this oval mass is known as hepatic acinus and this is this is this one this one is the short axis so this was the short axis explanation of short axis then this long axis now what is long axis so <laughs> here they are showing the long axis okay this is the long axis they are showing and long axis of the acinus is defined by two imaginary curve line which connect the two central vein closest to short axis two imaginary curve line okay and connecting the two central vein closest to short axis so here the six point for this six point we are using this figure once again two imaginary curve line this one one imaginary curve line second imaginary curve line connecting the two central vein connecting the two central vein and the central vein they are close to short axis closest to the short axis now where is the short axis so this is the this is the portal triad and here these are the branches of the portal triad so this is the short axis okay and here over here this distance okay this part this is the long axis and these are the two curve line they are talking and they are connecting the central vein so in six point the long axis we have discussed now moving on the seventh point of our discussion now in the seventh point hepatocyte in the hepatic acinus they are arranged all the hepatocyte of the hepatic acinus they are arranged in three zones around the short axis and this three zone they are not having sharp boundaries between them so what is what they are trying to explain us that uh, this one is the short axis okay short axis means the branches <laughs> of the portal triad now branches branches means what branches means arterial venule or the capillaries so the cell if you see this cell this hepatocyte this hepatocyte this hepatocyte 
which are very close to the branches of the <coughs> portal triad these hepatocytes they are known <coughs> they are known the hepatocyte of zone 1 then this hepatocyte they are slightly away from the short axis so this hepatocyte they are forming the zone 2 and the cell let's say this cell this hepatocyte as you can this all these hepatocytes they are very close to central vein and they are far away from the short axis so this zone this zone of hepatocyte is known as zone 3 similarly over here this one is zone 3 this one is zone 2 and this one is zone 1 over this side this one is zone 1 this one is zone 2 and this one is zone 3 so the zones of hepatic acinus Now moving on, 8th point, again in this figure, with the help of this figure, you can understand, over here the portal triad is shown left hand side, right hand side central vein is shown. This is blue color, hepatic portal vein, red color, artery and this one, bile duct or the ductule is shown. So together this three component bile duct, hepatic portal, vein and the artery this is the portal triad see and here central vein now the branches and this 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 these are the these are the all these are the hepatocyte cell now what happened from the artery the branch of artery we know uh, branch of artery arterial branch of vein venule arterial venual then the capillaries okay now let's see there are the capillaries the blood capillaries okay so there the blood capillaries they are surrounding they are surroundingly they are present they are present around the uh, this hepatocyte cell and again over here this blood capillaries they are joining together and they are forming the venule and the venule opening into the all the venules they in fact they are opening into the central vein so what these capillaries are doing in between the central vein and the portal triad? So see this, these are the hepatocyte cell and for the survival of this hepatocyte cell there is a requirement of oxygen. So oxygen is derived, oxygen is obtained by this red color branch that means the uh, artery artery is having the oxygenated blood so the branches of the artery arterial or the capillaries they will provide oxygen to this hepatocytes then hepatic portal vein there is the nutrients are present so nutrients will be delivered nutrients will be delivered to hepatocyte from the branches of hepatic portal vein and finally the capillaries will join and they will open into the central vein so here this this is the entire this one is the entire portal tri and this cell this cell this hepatocyte this hepatocyte they are very close to portal triad so they are forming this cells they are forming zone 1 this is the central vein this hepatocyte 
which are close to central vein they are forming zone 3 and this intermediate cell between the zone 1 and zone 2 this intermediate hepatocyte they are known as zone 2 so this is zone 2 this one is zone 1 and this one is the zone this one is the zone 3 okay and here now i have explained in which direction the blood is flowing so from portal tile i have just explained you how the blood is flowing so from portal tile uh, portal triad the blood is flowing in the direction of the central vein and in its route it will provide oxygen and nutrients to the hepatocytes then the bile flow bile flow opposite direction reason is <coughs> these are all these are all hepatocyte and they will secrete bile where they are secreting bile into the canaliculi canaliculi where they are opening they are opening into the ductule where the ductule are opening the ductule will open into the bile duct so finally the bile duct where it is present bile duct bile duct is present in the portal triad so from all this cell with the help of canaliculi and the ductule the bile will ultimately it will be poured into the bile duct so bile bile is flowing in the opposite direction so that's why these arrows are shown entire figure you go through all the names zone 1 2 3 I shown then zone 1 some extra information if you are interested per periportal zone then zone 2 zone 2 intermediate zone zone pericentral or centrilobular zone now now we are discussing now we are discussing cells in zone 1 we are discussing cells in zone 1 and this cell are close closest to the branches of the portal triad so which cell we are discussing this one this is the entire portal triad okay and you see this cell this hepatocyte this hepatocyte these hepatocytes are very close That means these cells are they are in fact in a contact with the portal uh, this uh, hepatic portal artery and the hepatic portal vein okay so this cell are we know this cell are the zone one cell so what are the characteristic of this zone one cell so these cells are very close to the branches of the portal triad and that's why they are immediately they are receiving the incoming oxygen from the blood then they are also very quickly they are receiving the nutrients from the branches of the portal triad and from the blood they are also receiving the toxic substances and this toxic substances will be destroyed by the zone 1 hepatocyte then this cell from the blood they are getting glucose and this glucose is stored in the form of glycogen in the hepatocyte so let's say uh, you attended uh, one marriage ceremony or some function and there are some good items and you had a very good meal so 
it is possible that various kind of varieties you have eaten up okay so that time what will happen in your blood the amount of uh, <coughs> glucose will be very high so most of the glucose will be in our circulation blood circulation but the extra glucose which is present in the blood so we know from the GI tract gastrointestinal tract let's say from the stomach the duodenum jejunum ileum, ileum from all this <coughs> parts of small intestine and the stomach the blood blood is coming into the liver by the hepatic, hepatic portal vein and this extra glucose is stored in the form of glycogen in the hepatocyte and when the person is hungry okay or the person is fasting let's say uh, in India there is a vrat called karva chawat on that day the woman of many Hindu women they keep fast on the karva chawat so what will happen on that day the wife is remaining on the water only she is not taking any kind of food or meal on that day so on that day what will happen in her body so on that day when she is fasting that day glycogen of her liver will be converted into glucose and this glucose will come into the main circulation of the blood so this is how person survives during the starvation or the fasting condition now then this zone 1 cell are also the first to show morphological changes following bile duct obstruction let's say uh, there is a leakage from bile duct and bile is leak so the hepatocyte will come into contact in the bile so there will be some morphological changes in this zone 1 cell then when they are exposed to toxic substance there are morphological changes in occurring in this zone 1 cell okay then then zone 1 cells are the last one to die if circulation is impaired the reason is the zone 1 cell are very close to the portal triad see and let's say a patient or the person is suffering that uh, the person's heart is not working properly so the heart is not able to supply the blood to all the body organs so in that condition the proper amount of blood is not reaching to the liver so in that case what will happen this zone one cell they are not going to affect it because they are very close to the portal triad but the cell which are going to be affected that are the cells of zone 3 because they are far away from this portal triad so that is the meaning of this line and first one to regenerate so when the normal blood circulation is established they are again going to regenerate that is the meaning of this eighth point so this this eighth point is uh, about the characteristic of zone one cell now moving on the ninth point here in this point we are discussing <laughs> cells of zone three so where are let's say zone 3 
hepatocyte. Zone 3 hepatocyte, as you can see, they are close to the central vein and they are very far away. They are far away from the portal triad. So what happens to them? What happened to zone 3 cell? So in zone 3 are the farthest from the branches of portal triad and are the last to show the effect of bile obstruction or exposure to toxin because they are far away and the first one to show the effect of impaired circulation because the circulation is not proper in the person's body then these cells of zone 3 they are far away from the portal triad so the branches or the capillaries of this portal triad they are not supplying oxygen and nutrient to this uh, this zone 3 cell so it is possible that this zone 3 cell will die in the absence of oxygen and the nutrients <coughs> and this zone 3 cell last one to regenerate they will regenerate at last then zone 3 cells are also the first to show evidence of fat accumulation so from the uh, hepatic portal vein and the artery the fat is stored fat is accumulated in the zone 3 cells so in the 9 point we had discussed the characteristic of the zone 3 hepatocyte cell now zone 2 zone 2 hepatocyte characteristic so cells of zone 2 right now I am showing you the cells of zone 2 this cells this region cell this cells these are zone 2 cell and cells in zone 2 <coughs> they are having structural and functional characteristic which is intermediate between the cells in zone 1 and zone 3 now what is the meaning of this thing that the zone 2 cell they are having few characteristic of zone 1 cell and they will be having few characteristic of zone 3 cell that is the meaning of this point and now last point of today's presentation lecture the last point is this now this model the third model the hepatic SNS model is widely accepted all over the world everywhere what is the reason see hepatic acinus is the smallest structural and functional unit of the liver first thing and its popularity the reason why it is popular this model is and why this model is appealing model that it provides the logical description and interpretation of the function of the liver in fact this hepatic acinus is dis describing the structural component and function of the liver how the hepatocytes are working then how these glycogen storage is occurring and how the glycogen how glucose glucose is converted into glycogen and when body is fasting or starving that time glycogen is again converted into gl uh, glucose all this function they are described by the hepatic acinus then the toxic effect 
so hypotocyanate will receive the toxic substances and it will destroy the toxic substances from the body then the degeneration and the regeneration of hepatocyte we have already discussed this thing when they are degenerating and when they are regenerating okay yeah. so with this we have completed uh, this presentation lecture so this lecture we can say this lecture was about the remaining part of the histology of the liver i hope you have enjoyed this presentation lecture and i also hope that this presentation lecture will be helpful in your exam preparation and in your studies my name is manish kushti sir i am from ahmedabad india bye bye namaste